My name is Christy Rowe. I'm an artist and fashion designer born in Perth. My descendants on my dad's side are the Morels, who arrived in 1831, and my mum's side the Snowballs, who opened Snowball & Co. Grocers, just down the road from the Perth Town Hall. I've been sketching dress designs that were worn at the Town Hall, or of the eras, and thinking about how dressmakers of the day would have sewn them. Events in the hall have been easy to imagine. I can see figures situated within the architecture, real people dancing, socialising, and living their lives through the Perth Town Hall. The personality is coming alive when sketched in the fashions of the time. At the hall's opening in 1870, the silhouette was wide crinoline skirts. There was the monster tea party in which many of the 900 attendees were women. Just imagine hundreds of crinoline skirts in the space. Just five years later, the silhouette had transformed into the bustle, more streamlined and out the back. The decadent Bella Polk era always inspires. I made these cuffs in the style of Bella Polk with silk, metallic bullion and ostrich feathers. Many dinners and formal events occurred at the Perth Town Hall during this time, decorated with freshly cut palms and bamboo. On stage, the entertainment was always key. Even during the war years, opera singers and bands lifted spirits. Performers, of course, would have had more glamorous dresses with extra design details, ruffles and flounces to be noticed on stage. I've been fascinated to find artist Henry Princep's sketch of himself as Harlequin at the Fancy Dress Masquerade Ball of 1878, as well as many ballgoers on roller skates. Fancy Dress Balls have always been at the Perth Town Hall with reoccurring costumes of Perio, the French clown and the popular theme of night personified. In the 20s, velvet, feathers and sheer beaded silks in boxy-shaped tunics were the epitome of modernity. For me, looking back, it becomes difficult to separate illustrative representations of the eras. Through studying photographs, I could see how fabrics and accessories were interpreted into Art Deco-style illustrations. For example, a tucked tulle headpiece appearing like a metal crown. In 1929, the hall goers did just that, interpreted the fashions of a century before for a reenactment of Federation in 1829, when Helen Dance famously chopped into a tree with an axe amongst the men in military uniforms. Days were spent making the costumes and military embroideries for the pageant performed on the hall stage. In the 40s and 50s, Town Hall became a palais de danse. My gran, Norma, was a dressmaker designer for Perth socialites from the 40s and she met my grandfather, George Snowball, as her ballroom dancing partner. I often think of the yellow wattle gown she described to me with tiny wattle flowers dripping down the shoulder and yards of cotton tools swishing about the floor when she waltzed. Sewing room stories have captured my imagination since I was little, working with my mum and my gran designing and sewing dresses. I love the nostalgic stories that objects hold. My work, whether it's in paintings or clothing design, looks first to the past before reimagining the elements to create something new. I connect with human experiences as well as our environment around us. It's intriguing to imagine how people of the past felt, the same as we do now when we feel the texture of silk or hear the sound of a beautiful instrument. The viola player, Cathy Olivieri, is wearing a design I made using vintage Swiss lace that was handed down to me by the family of Perth dressmaker, Mary Ferrari. I love the anticipation that handmaking a dress for an event brings, dreaming of how it will look and which accessories to team it with, how it will swish around the dance floor and how you will make sure to get that photograph capturing you in your gown by the grand staircase.